What is up, you guys? Welcome back or welcome to Life is Fake, the podcast. If you're new here, hey, I'm Lindsay and I'm the host of Life is Fake and I release new episodes every Wednesday. We're going three for three, okay? This is good. Consistency is key. Um, loving putting out content again. I hope you guys are happy the pod is back. I'm happy she's back. I'm loving this like rebrand, relaunch whole thing. Very exciting news. I have started like talking with a company to do merch like life is fake merch it'd obviously just be like a, a really small first launch i don't really like, actually don't know i probably shouldn't even be saying anything i don't know spill the tea early on in the episode but i got really excited because today i actually like officially made the mood board and got like ideas to them and they're gonna start working with their like graphic designer to create stuff and yeah so i'm excited to like get the ball rolling is that the like nine to five is that the corporate lingo let's get the ball rolling on this and I was like okay I don't know what that means <laughs> just kidding um how are we doing I'm gonna be honest right now I feel so like not scatterbrained I don't think that's the right word I think it just, I'm feeling very anxious I can feel my like anxious attachment style happening which is so like contradicting to I feel like the last episode or two talking about like casual dating and I'm in my casual era like I don't give a fuck yeah guess who caught feelings guess who's guess who's struggling with her anxious attachment and it's roaring its ugly head off at this moment. So I've re-recorded this episode or this podcast only like the first like 10 minutes, but I keep restarting it because I just feel jumbled my whole week. I've had a rough week. I'm going to be honest. And that's <laughs> this episode's kind of just like a, a debrief, just catch up sesh, not a ton happen. And I feel like sometimes I feel bad when I do episodes like this, but it's, the reality of like my life like there, there nothing great really happened this week um and it's never like when I feel like I talk about negative things it's like okay like don't put negative energy out there like no one wants to hear you fucking bitch and moan but at the same time I do think it's helpful because if you say it's not to me it's a fact like misery loves company and if you're going through something sometimes the only thing that makes you feel better is to know that someone else is also going through something even if it's not the same thing it's even better when it's the same thing like if, if anything of the stuff I go through and that I'm about to talk about you have felt or you're currently feeling it's that much more like reassuring to know that you're not alone which is kind of the whole premise I feel like of everything that I do like specifically and especially on TikTok um it's kind of just the vibes, you know? So I, I think some people are like, oh my gosh, like, shut up. Like, <laughs> like your life isn't that bad. Um, and touche, you know, you can't really judge someone's bad because you, their bad might be your good. You know what I mean? Like my worst day could be your best day. So it's not like a tit for tat or like my bad is worse than yours. And honestly, none of the stuff that I'm even going to talk about is like bad. It's more so just like relatable shit. And I'm just like, God damn it. Um, yeah, not my best week for sure. And that's life. Life is fake. There's ups and downs. It's like a big roller coaster. And this was a down one. Um, a positive is that it feels like fall. I live in Florida and so we don't really get seasons. I'm so jealous. I've been starting to see all the fall content of all the girlies like in Vermont and like Montana and just honestly anywhere other than Florida it feels like of the beautiful like fall leaves and like their cute fall clothes and their chunky scarves and their Uggs and I did buy some Uggs but it's so colorful and, and pretty and I just I just mm, I crave it like I want to go somewhere and like really get that fall experience but Florida did drop its weather uh don't drop that dun 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 it dropped the weather like 10 degrees I would say like she's chilly okay it's like 70 75 70 and that's chilly and it feel like the minute I kid you not the minute the millisecond that that weather changed I felt a shift in my body. I felt a change. Like, you know how they say certain smells will take you back to like a certain time in your life that you, um, what's the word, like correspond with that scent. I think your scent is like the most, this the strongest ability of that, if that makes sense. Um, but I think the weather also does that for me because it takes me back to wherever I was mindset wise, relationship wise, just all of that this time last year. 
and maybe the fall before then. Like the relation that I have with cold weather is this. And so I think it was just, it's funny because the minute, I kid you not, that it turned cold, I was like, I want a boyfriend. And I just was like just raving and ranting to you guys and preaching to the choir about this casual dating era and how I don't give a fuck. I don't like any of these guys. It's all just fun. No. Guess who's anxiously attached and sitting here like on the edge of her seat? Not really. It's all in my head. But it's like, do I actually even want a boyfriend or is it just fall? Like, do I actually even like this person or do I just want someone to do fall activities with and like go to the pumpkin patch and make apple cider? Do I actually envision a future with this person or did the temperature just drop 10 degrees? I don't know. I can't tell. I genuinely can't decipher my own feelings or the the weather, like the season. Like, I don't know the difference. So I'm just gonna just let it be, let it ride. Um... But yeah, super excited for fall, but I will say what comes with all the fun fall activities is seasonal depression. Yeah, yeah. Immediately this last week, I've been feeling so ugly, so uggo, and I just was like, what the fuck? And then I'm also realizing I got my period. Like, I think the minute I was like feeling ugly, I got my period and I was like, oh, that makes sense. (laughs) I've been trying to be better about like, what's it called? keeping track of my cycle. I think growing up, I was very regular, definitely throughout like, you know, my teens when I first got my period, but I was very active. And so I think they were saying that that can be a big cause of it. I was dancing five to six days a week, working out. All of those things definitely were like, you know, tripping my body up and I would go like a couple of months without getting my period and then I would get it and then I wouldn't. Um, So I've never had like the very consistent period. I've never been on birth control which is shocking to a lot of girls and women. Um, and people ask me all the time, like, why not? Especially because, I'm, you know, I'm single. I'm, you get the point. Um, and birth control, I just, I feel like I saw a lot of my friends taking it since they were so young. Uh, granted, I was very lucky. I, when I did get my period, they were never bad. It was always pretty short, pretty light. I never suffered with bad cramps or like, you know, getting nauseous back. Like I didn't really have any of the side effects. My periods now that I've gotten older are definitely a bit more intense. Um, that first day or two, I have pretty bad cramps. Don't want to do anything, but I think that's pretty normal. And it's definitely has gotten a lot more regular, you know, every month, obviously it comes and, last the normal amount of time it's good like it's all good but what I was saying was in high school and even maybe middle school I don't remember when a lot of my friends started getting on birth control but to me I wasn't I didn't lose my virginity till I was 18 so I just felt silly I was like I I don't have any of the symptoms bad symptoms for my period I'm not sexually active and the only other reason at the time was like I did have acne but it was like not bad I did not have like the Alex Earl acne. I did not have crazy, like I did, I just had normal acne. And my mom was like, you should get on birth control. And I feel like she was doing that <laughs> as like a way to cover up. She probably thought, cause I had a boyfriend in high school. So she probably thought that things were happening, but she didn't want to like point fingers. So she was like, we're going to do it because of your skin. Um, pop off queen. I still said no, which I'm very proud of. And like I said, a lot of people would think the opposite, but for me, I just don't understand and never wanted to have, you know, hormones being put into my body so that I didn't know myself because I just hear all these stories of women and girls getting off birth control after years of being on it and everything is like different, you know, like how you feel about yourself how you know all of your different emotions because you have a totally different level of hormones in you I've even seen I saw this thing on TikTok where it showed two guys that look very very similar it's like this it's like AI but it's like two different versions of guys and literally they were like if you find the guy on the left you know more attractive than the other guy you're probably on hormonal uh, birth control and it was so accurate all the girls in the comments were like wait Yes. So, and then if you aren't on hormonal like birth control or you have gotten off of it, the people that you find attractive can change. So imagine going your whole life being on this birth control and then, you know, thinking this type of guy is attractive, then you get off of it and you don't find them attractive anymore. I mean, imagine if it's your boyfriend or like your husband, right? And you thought he was so hot and you were so attracted to him for 
10 years of your life or however long you guys are together, blah, 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 blah. And then you get off of it and all of a sudden you don't look at him the same way. And it's just hormone. It's like your hormones. It, there's nothing you can control. So I don't like anything in my life where I feel out of control. And so adding something into me <laughs> that changes literally like my makeup, if that, not my makeup, like on the outside, but my, how I'm made up on the inside and how I think and how I feel. No, that was always tripping me out. And then I know they do like the copper um, IUDs, so the non-hormonal IUDs, but that the idea of that scares the shit out of me too. I've heard they hurt so bad. I've heard horror stories. Uh, it's just, you know, yeah, not my thing. I was trying to figure out how I got on that topic, but it was about me feeling ugly. <laughs> but a lot of that happens, you know, I'm trying to learn more as well about like, you know, the different cycles, right? The phases, you, you know, with your menstrual cycle. So... There's times when you feel like you're leanest and you do look your leanest and you're going to have the most energy and so you should do your high impact workouts then. And then obviously there's the times when you're going to just naturally be bloated and like feel fugly and have low energy. And so I'm trying to like understand and, and keep track of that. So when I'm feeling that way, know that it's like not because I'm actually ugly <laughs> and that it's just, you know, that phase of my cycle. So when I was feeling ugly last week, I was like, okay, well, we got to do something about this. So step number one of what I did was I went to Sephora, no, Ulta. And I don't recommend doing this per se because it's the same idea, I think, of how you should not go to the grocery store when you're hungry because you're going to get the wrong stuff or too much stuff. You cannot control your eyes. So I was in Ulta just like frenzy frenzying around also just so overwhelming I'm I'm not a makeup girly in the sense like I mean I love makeup I wear makeup but I, I'm definitely not like an experimenter I don't like to drop bands <laughs> racks tons of dollar bills on makeup and it's really hard for me to justify or like differentiate the high-end versus like the drugstore dupes. I'm a drugstore girly through and through, but I do think there are some things that are worth, you know, splurging or spending your money on, etc. I like I got the Laura Mercier translucent powder that I've wanted my entire life and I just never bought it. Um, but I feel like my under eyes are always freaking crusty and wrinkly and creasy. So splurged on that, but then I'm still gonna go and grab my like L'Oreal Paris foundation, you know? Anyways, so went to Sephora. Fuck, no, I went to Ulta and that was step number one. Step number two was I self-tan. That definitely helped a lot. I used the Isle of Paradise self-tanner. Um, that was not a sponsored. I don't know even know why I said that. I think someone asked me on TikTok what uh, self-tanner I use. And honestly, I honestly don't self-tan very often. I'm usually a, a natural gal out in the sun, even though I probably shouldn't be. Wear your sunscreen. Um, <laughs> but I was getting my hair done the next day. So I also have dyed my hair since the last episode. It's not a huge difference, but I just feel like I wanted to go a bit darker for fall like a lot of people do. And I also think it matches this baddie era that I'm trying to really tap into. Again, I said that I say that and I'm over here anxiously attached to someone already. <laughs> um, but I went cowboy copper, if you will. I don't think it's that. I like to call it man eater mahogany and I will trademark that. Just kidding. It's basically just like a dark, dark red that almost looks brown. I really, really like it. Honestly, I kind of even want to go darker and almost more so just brown. I like that I can still say I'm a redhead, but it's definitely more, you know, it looks brunette and I really, really like it. So, but I was like, I will be damned if I go and get my hair darker and be pale because it's going to just wash me out that much more. But with the tan, I feel like it's nice and complimentary. All of this to say, you're not actually ugly. <laughs> if you're feeling ugly, know that this too shall pass. And in the meantime, do some things to take care of yourself so that you don't let it like spiral into you actually thinking you're ugly. One, you're not. Two, maybe track your cycle or your phase, see where you're at. I'm finding that that's helpful. Three, we are about to go into, like I said, fall and winter. And with that comes that like just 
pe- people get ugly. There's a reason they call it summer glow. Not like you don't actually get ugly, but the things that you might not like about yourself definitely start to come to the forefront. And I, the number one I think of is like being pale. And if you know you don't like the way you feel when you're pale, some and this is obviously to each their own, pale is also very, very beautiful, like very porcelain, light skin. There's nothing wrong with being pale. I'm saying for you, if you are feeling ugly and your self-confidence is going down the drain and you can see it going down the drain and spiraling like me, do something to help yourself so that it doesn't turn into a big self-hate season, right? We can deal with a bad day or two, a week, whatever, um, but try to like take care of the self-care so that you feel good. And if that's new makeup, if that's your hair, getting a blowout, doing some heatless curls, like do something that makes you feel feel better, feel good. Um, so come the weekend, I'm feeling good again. I'm feeling hot, I'm feeling confident. Got the new hair, got the tan, new makeup, it's feeling good. Yeah, Uh, and this was the weekend I'm celebrating my birthday. I was telling you guys last week, I was finally getting to celebrate my birthday. My birthday was October 2nd, but a lot of my friends were busy both of those weekends that were surrounding my birthday. So I planned, you know, to get everyone together. We did a little like wine and cheese night at this really cute wine bar. It was so, so good. And it was like me and a few of my like closest friends. So that was at like 6.30. I wanna paint or like really... (laughs) <laughs> emphasize this because I look back and I'm like, what a fucking idiot I am. What? Who did I think I was that I was going to be able to start drinking at 6.30 and then not be a complete mess, you know, by the time we actually get to the bar, midnight, all that. Um, when I say <laughs> the night started out so good, like just we were all dressed up, the vibes were good, the wine was flowing, the com- like I, we were laughing, like the we got a charcuterie board and it was so, so good. Everything was just so good. And then all the girls came over to my apartment and we got changed and we, you know, just put on our normal like going out clothes. So we went from wearing like dresses to like going out stuff. And then we were going to our like normal favorite bar. And it's this like really big line dancing country bar that we always go to. We basically always know the vibes. It's always good. It's always a good time. We know everyone basically that works there. And then my friends were meeting us there as well. So it's like even more people were joining and it was great. So at my house in between, so say we did wine from like 6.30 to probably like 8.30, maybe. I want to, I don't even remember, probably 8, 8.30. I had three glasses of Pinot Grigio just painting the picture. So then we get to my apartment, you know, pre-gaming, playing some music, getting dressed, all the good girly vibes, so fun. And my friends, they love making like shots, you know, mixed shots. So we had vodka and like cranberry or like orange juice. I don't know. So we're doing just like shots of vodka and that's not typically my thing. I don't really do shots. And I also have already just drank almost like a bottle of white wine. So we're drinking Then we go to the bar and the bar was not the vibe and it was so devastating because it should have just been perfect. You know what I mean? It's like on your birthday, I swear to God, nothing can ever just go right. It always has to have a twist. You're always going to end up crying and well, not to spoil this for you, I've never cried so hard in the middle of a bar in my life. Not this bar. So we get to that bar and it was not fun. They usually always have live music, like a band on stage and it's just so lively and fun and whatever. There was like a DJ, I guess the band had called out last minute, like of course, right? No one I knew really was there, you know, it was just me and my friends, but it's always fun. I feel like when there's other people around that, you know, so we were like, you know what? I heard that a few of our other friends were going to be at the other like dive bar that we used to go to a lot. And I was like, that'd be fun for old time's sake. We'll just go there. It'll be chill, you know, better than this, hopefully. So we leave and go to that next bar. And when I tell you, I honestly don't remember leaving that bar and going to the next. I have one video on my phone from the entire night of us like in the Uber, like in the car on the way there, like listening to music and all like singing or something. That's my only thing that I have and I don't even recall it which is so scary and I mean we can talk about alcohol in a second and like the relationship with it but I don't remember 
being honestly at the, at the last bar, the second bar that we went to and uh, kind of valid because I've been drinking since six 30 and mixing and it's just a lot. Right. But my thing is I'm the type of drunk that when I'm literally blacked out, like when I'm drunk, drunk, <laughs> I act completely normal. Like I act very composed there's just nothing going on behind the eyes, right? But it's really hard for someone to decipher if I'm drunk because I act fine. Like I really, really do. It's actually scary. And part of me wishes I was like the crazy girl that acts, you know, wild. And you know, when she's blacked out, it's like, oh shit, like Lindsay needs to go home. But I act completely normal. So everyone just treats me normal and I might keep drinking. They might buy me stuff. Like it's just not nice. And I also do this thing, obviously, where I get, I mean, you can tell, obviously, when I'm sober, I'm pretty, like, boy, you know, boy crazy. It's the Libra in me. I can't help it, but, um, and I don't mean to do it. I don't like that I do it, and I did it that night. Um, don't even know why, not something or a person that I necessarily would have wanted to, like, <laughs> that I give a fuck about, and that sounds so rude, but it's, like, not a person that I would ever not that I would honestly choose anyone over my best friends, but when I am in this like just tunnel vision and I'm blacked out, I, that's what I do. Anyways, my friends were super upset because they said that they like were calling my name at this bar and trying to get my attention and trying to get me like away from this guy because they were like, no, like it's your birthday. Like we want to spend time with you. We all came here for you. We all want to hang out and you're basically ignoring us, which yeah, that's so fucking rude. But my thing is like, I would never intentionally do that. And I would never do that if I was in a coherent state of mind, but they were saying, I literally like walked right past them, like looked, looked at them and kept walking. And that's something that I would literally, like I said, never do. So then emotions got super high. My friends are so hurt by like what I did or that I'm doing that. I have no idea what I even did. And we just like have it out at the bar and like my best friend's crying and I'm crying because she never cries. So like I clearly hurt her. So now I'm so upset. I feel all my friends like hate me even if they didn't actually, it for sure felt like that. And it was just like the worst thing ever. Like it was quite literally one of the most traumatic nights of my life. I just remember being like in the parking lot, sitting in the gravel, like <laughs> literally sitting in the parking lot, um, just crying my eyes out. I tried to call a few people. Like, I'm so glad the people I called didn't answer. And these calls were at like two in the morning. So I'm like, yeah, Lens, you, you needed to go home. Um, so that was mortifying. Woke up with the worst anxiety I've quite literally ever had in my entire life. And then, you know, the next morning have to basically with, you know, my tail in between my legs, call my best friend. And I was so scared because, you know, I don't remember I don't, exactly what happened. I remember crying. I remember being so hurt. I know that I, like, I did know that for sure because that shit will sober you up real quick. But, you know, I call her and, and we talk about it and it just kind of, made me think about and just realize as well how important friendships are and how much they mean to me, especially my best friends. And it's so scary to think about ever doing anything that would, you know, jeopardize that or ruin that or lose any, any friendship. So I, I really do my best to like take accountability and be very, very secure in my communication when I'm apologizing or if anyone ever apologizes to me. Um, it's very like intentional and, you know, I don't know. I just feel like friendships have to be treated like relationships. And it is interesting as well, because I have one friend that was obviously there that night, my best friend. And the next morning she sent me a TikTok and it was like, it, we don't, we didn't even have to really talk about it. We've been friends for so long. She's like my sister. We've seen each other at the literal worst. So a drunken night, you know, definitely like, you know, misunderstandings and heightened emotions. It was shitty for sure. But it also was just one of those things where like, not that I didn't feel like I needed to apologize to her, but it just was one of the things where we were both like, don't even talk about it. Just keep it moving. You know, like it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. But then like I have other friends that I do feel like are a bit more like delicate. Not that like my friend themselves are more delicate, but I just feel like the way our friendship has formed is more adulty. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just really find it important to, you know, have those hard calls, you know, apologize and be very, I think there's a difference between just apologizing and really trying to convey, like, I understand 
that I hurt you. I understand why that hurt you. If you know, this shoe was on the other foot, it's not right. And I totally will admit to that and be the first person to, to admit that, I, I guess, like that's all you can do. And, and understand that it's very genuine. So fingers crossed we're all good. Everyone needs their space, <laughs> but what it's a birthday without crying. Like I just, it, I have to stop celebrating the day that I did by myself was the most beautiful, best birthday. And then you try to, you know, bring in alcohol and other people and boy, like fuck all of that. It just, it never works out. And this is definitely not the first time that this has, you know, happened. And I've been like on the side of the road crying alone on my birthday. Yep. No, it's a trend. <laughs> Oh my God. And then you want to talk about a gut punch on top of all of this. So I deal with all of that all night, wake up the next morning with the worst anxiety I've ever had. Everyone hates me. My world's over. Um, I have no friends. I'm the worst, you know, all of the things. And I honestly feel like that on a normal night out the next morning. I'm like, I must, I probably did something, probably embarrassed myself, probably said something stupid. I, who knows? That's just the normal anxiety. And that is the part of drinking that I obviously despise and hate um but imagine this I'm sitting there in my bedroom with all this anxiety and I go on Instagram and the absolute gut punch it is when you see your you know I'm not gonna say I don't know how you say like that person that person that it still hurts when you think about, right? It's like, you don't really have any closure. Um, you know, you think you're over it. I think it's this, you think you're over it. You think you're healed. You're good. You're a bad bitch. You don't give a fuck. And then they hard launch their new girl. Ouch. Ouch. No, but it hurts worse because it's like, it's worse when it, it's the guy or the person for you or whatever that said, like, I don't want a relationship or like, I don't want a relationship right now. Or like, I don't want don't see a relationship with you, all of those things, right? That whole verbiage, that whole little spiral that is that. And I was talking about it with my roommate of why it hurts so much because I think, like I was saying actually in the last episode, typically when someone says, you know, I don't want a relationship right now, it's for factors that aren't like about you. Like it's, it could be, it's bad timing. It could be, they have too much going on with work and, you know, the thought of adding in a human into their life, like they just can't handle it right now. So it's not that they don't like you and that they don't want, you know, a relationship with you. But then when they do get into a relationship soon after they said that to you, it's like, oh no, it was me because you clearly are okay and still pursuing people. It's not like a timing issue. It's not a work thing. It's not any of those excuses that I think we're able to tell ourselves to maybe like help our own ego, you know, and not in a bad way. You can tell yourself whatever you want. If it helps you heal, it's like that Meredith Grey uh, quote. I don't remember it verbatim from Grey's Anatomy, but she was like, you don't get to judge me for how I fix myself after you broke me. Like you don't get to call me a slut if, if how I deal with this and how I heal and what makes me feel better is going and dating someone else or going and sleeping around or whatever. But it's like that. I'm going to tell myself whatever I need to tell myself if it makes me feel better, but it might not be the truth. But then to get the validation that it actually is not the truth and that they just didn't want you. It's not that they didn't want a relationship because they clearly do because they found it with someone else. That fucking sucks and that hurt. Um, so that was just the cherry on the fucking cake or whatever it is. Cherry on the Sunday, Cherry on top hurt so bad. <laughs> My best friend sent it to me. I go, I, I really wish you wouldn't have. I could have gone at least another 24 hours without any more bad in my life. Um, but it's okay. We move on. It's, it's good. It's okay. Oh, I'm just going to keep telling myself that. <laughs> I was going to twist this to a positive, but I think it's still a negative, but I literally, you guys fell in love with this guy that I saw on TikTok, but he lives in Houston, Texas. Like, the positive is like this guy, I am so, I, I'm not a fangirl type of girl, okay? If a guy is making TikToks, that usually cringes me the fuck out. I'm like, absolutely not. This guy though, I like, I feel almost like embarrassed by how much I'm watching his videos and like how I feel when I watch his videos. Not like that, but like, I'm like, oh, this is my, like, I love him. And he has this cat 
and I have a cat. I know this sounds insane and I'm not going to tell you who it is because, well, first of all, back off, he's mine. <laughs> and also like 70,000 other girls that follow him. Um, he's not like an influencer, so I don't get that vibe, but he's just perfect. I, I'm thinking about like duetting one of his videos and like literally shooting my shot. I know that sounds insane and it doesn't even make sense because I don't live in Texas and I don't think I would ever, I don't know, actually, you guys, like he's so cute. <laughs> Listen to me talk about this guy that I literally don't even know um, and will never probably ever meet. But in my head, oh my gosh, like he's literally my dream guy. He's like 6'2", has this super cute cat and they make all these cute videos and he does like get ready with me. His style's really good. His vo like, oh my God, listen to me. Anyways, yeah, I know. I'm like kind of going through it, but he's so cute. But does anyone else like fall in love with people they see on TikTok and like, you know, people that you will never know in real life? But then I guess you do hear some stories of girls and people like shooting their shot via TikTok or DM and it works out. So I'm like, I might as well try. I don't know. What do I have to lose? Okay, let's be real. Um, What else? <laughs> I guess I'll circle back to what, ooh, what is this, a Zoom interview? A email thread? Corporate chatter? Corporate chat? What the, f oh, what the fuck? Sorry about that. It was weird. Um, I was just trying to say, I guess I will get back to what I was saying in the very beginning that I promised I would tell you about. And it's why I'm anxious because I'm obviously anxiously attached because I have a crush. Shocker. Surprising. Not really. Is anyone surprised? Yeah, my casual dating era lasted for what, a couple of weeks? No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm in it, but it, she's definitely like leaving the building, right? It's one foot in, one foot out right now. Lover girl Lindsay is kicking the door down and I can feel it. I'm like, crap, I'm attached. <laughs> um, so I guess to explain it, it's interesting. And I've been trying to like, you know, obviously my overthinking tendencies is trying to decipher and, and figure this out and why do I feel this way and do I actually like this person and why does this seem different this like what you know what is it about this that's whatever and I think it's interesting so to give you a little like background or like understand the the relationship it's not a relationship but you know what I mean typically I feel like dating for me is mostly dating apps not always you know some are organic but you know, a lot of dating apps. And I feel like with that, you're, you're going into it with the intention, obviously romantically to go on dates or to date this person. So when you match with someone, you both are obviously interested in each other, find each other attractive. You go on this date. And I think, you know, the vibes are always, are typically like super high. You're on your best behavior. It's a stranger. You get to like ask them anything. You don't know anything about them. And, and so it, it can create this like false sense of like intimacy or, you know, rose tinted glasses because you really, what, how much can you really learn about a person in a couple of hours? So it typically goes really well, at least for me. Like I usually love the dates I go on. I really have, I don't even know if I can remember any horrible dates that I've been on. I, typically they go really well. So then I'm like, oh my gosh, like I met this guy and you're on, you know, cloud nine. It's, you're on a hundred. Then you maybe hang out with them again. And those first date vibes and the butterflies and all that are definitely like dwindling off and you actually start to see the person a little bit more maybe for who they are or maybe I don't know what I'm saying is it typically goes from really high you know down a slope or they just end up ghosting you or you both don't reach out like it just it fades away so for me this is kind of being the opposite where this is a person that I already knew and um, Layla, sorry, someone that I already knew and we ran into to each other like out in public um, at a bar and he's so, so cute. Someone, you know, he's a little bit older than me, went to a different school, but definitely like ran in similar groups or our groups would like overlap, kind of like a Venn diagram. So it's like, you know him, but like you don't really know anything about him. Kind of mysterious, kind of like bad boy vibes. So like very exciting. So I was going into it super with like super high expectations maybe. And that's never a good thing because then, you know, it, it creates disappointment. But we hung out for the first time and I just remember like texting my best friend and just being like, no, it's not it. Like not vibing. 
not really like, I just don't think, you know, it's my type of person and nothing wrong with it. And it's basically what I was telling you guys of like how I was going about this casual dating thing. So I'm like, oh, but he's really cute. Always down to like hang out, like very chill, like chill vibes, all good. But like, don't think I see anything like being able to like happen with it. Um, so hang out again, hang out a few, you know, a few more times. And each time it's like getting better. <laughs> Crazy, right? Shocker. You actually like start to get more comfortable around the person, their jokes, you know, they start being like funnier. And I remember even saying, I'm just kind of being like, wait, you're funny. Cause that was just not how I felt the very first time we hung out. And if it would have been someone that I didn't know, and it was like a first date from a dating app, probably wouldn't have gone on a second date is what I'm saying. But with this, I was like more casual about it. So I was like, yeah, why not? So the more we've hung out, the more I'm like, oh shit, I actually do like spending time with you and like hanging out with you and you, like you. And you know, it's interesting because when I think back about the first time that we hung out and like I said, t texting my best friend and just being like, nope, this isn't it because of X, Y, Z, which are things that like I don't personally do or enjoy or like. And I would even go as far to say like how I've told you guys, I have this list of the different qualities that like I want in a person. And I will say there's one on there that I look at it and sometimes I'm like, that's so fucked up. But it says, you know, doesn't like EDM. Like that is, was something, if a guy on a dating profile, I kid you not, if a guy on his dating profile had a picture at like a, a music festival, like EDM festival, like where they're dressed up and stuff, uh, immediately that's a no for me. And I would always explain it to my best friends because she was on the same mindset. We both thought the exact same way. And I was like, why do we think that? Like, I don't, I don't like the music, but a lot of people don't probably like the music I like. I, I wouldn't judge someone because, you know, or I wouldn't want someone to judge me because I listen to country music sometimes or because I like Taylor Swift, like a music choice that's so personal and it's so expressive. And I just feel like it's an art form. And so the fact that we are judging someone because they, you know, go to EDM festivals. I was like, why do we do that? And I realized it's a deeper, a deeper thing for me because typically I relate, you know, people that go to EDM festivals and things like that with people that probably do drugs. And I have never done drugs. I'm like, I just not my vibe. Honestly, I don't smoke, never smoked weed or like, well, that's a lie, but I don't do it. I mean, I could count the number of times on my hand since I was like in high school. So it's not something I do. I've never smoked nicotine or vape, like vaping, no drugs. Like I drink alcohol and like, that's it. But anyways, I just typically find, you know, I don't hang around that crowd. That's not my vibe. But does that mean like it makes someone a bad person or that, you know, we wouldn't get along or anything like that. So then I'm like, well, fuck now I feel stupid for having that on my list because it just is something that I don't really think is that important and should be judged upon. Um, and so that's kind of how I went into when I was hanging out with him or like when I met him, because I know that that is kind of like his vibe. And so immediately i almost wrote him off. Right or at least I kind of basically did in the romantic sense or in the sense of, I'm like, well, you clearly couldn't be my person. My list says no EDM and you like EDM. So you're clearly not my person. And I'm not saying he's my person, but you get what I'm saying. It's one of those stupid things that it's like, really doesn't matter when you actually start to get to know someone and don't judge them based off something so silly. And this is just one example that, I mean, if you want to go deeper with it, it's people judging someone based off their, eth you know, ethnicity or their height or, you know, how much money they make, like things like that. Um, and then when you actually get to take the time to hang out with someone, get to know them and yeah, they're like a really good person and they've experienced a lot in their life. They've gone through a lot in their life. There's a lot of similarities of things you guys have gone through. You relate on different things. There's just so much. And now I'm like, oh shit, right? Like, <laughs> And, you know, there's different, different areas of life that I, yeah, I haven't explored. And it's, it's one of those things where I'm trying to decipher, figure out right now. It's like, because we are opposite in some things, is it a good thing? Cause it pushes me out of my like comfort zone or my boundaries, not boundaries, but like, yeah, I'm a comfort zone. I would say of doing things that I might really enjoy doing. I'm not talking about drugs, by the way. I feel like I just said that. So now that's what it sounds like. But I'm, I'm saying like even exploring, you know, different types of music or different places that I've never been, um, you know, camping and, and doing all sorts of stuff that I just typically wouldn't do. Um, 
but it's kind of giving like yin and yang energy or like not opposites attract. But yeah, I just feel like it could be good for both of us in the sense of, um, I think he's a bit nervous. Like I do have like a halo over my head almost like, I'm, you know, I think I'm a pretty like good girl, kind of not goody two shoes by any means, but he's a little more like, he's very chill, but I would say kind of, not rough around the edges, but yeah, has experienced like a lot of life. So it's, I like, I wonder if that type of energy would be good for me. And if my type of energy would be comforting and like good for him. And so it's interesting. So I guess it's just kind of an exploration right now and trying to take it as it, as it's going and enjoying it. The other night we, um, the day after my birthday celebration, when I was sitting in my crippling anxiety, all I wanted to do was like, obviously crawl out of my skin, get out of the house. And so we went to dinner, which was super nice. And then I was like, you know, I want to go touch some grass. Like, or I need to be outside. So we went and went to the park that's over here. And we watched just like this, these random people play softball. Like we don't know any of the people. We just sat in the bleachers. We were the only ones in the bleachers. I'm sure everyone playing softball were like, who the fuck are these people? Um, <laughs> and then we went to this little playground that it was nighttime so there were no kids or anything and just it was like my inner child got to come out right and that doesn't get to happen that doesn't happen often so it was kind of just you know made me feel so much better it was very lightning and yeah played on the playground and then came home and watched twilight <laughs> which is such a vibe um yeah so it's going it's good. I don't know what it is. It's not really, it's not anything at the moment. Knock on wood. I mean, I don't want to like jinx it because I feel like I always do, but it's a casual approach to dating, right? But it's not casual dating in the sense of like dating multiple people. It's a more casual, slower, chill vibe of like hanging out and just like genuinely getting to know someone. Honestly, for the, for the first part of us hanging out, a lot of it like not romantic at all. It was genuinely like hanging out with a friend, which I don't, I don't really have guy friends. It's not something I typically do, but I feel like it allowed all of the nervousness and anxiousness or any type of like awkwardness of, you know, when you're dating someone to kind of be forgotten about and not thought about in that way, because it wasn't like that. It was like friends just like hanging out and getting to know each other. Anyways, enough about boys and all my thoughts about that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, speaking of Twilight though, I have like a little list of things I'm excited to do for fall. It's already halfway through October. I like can't believe it, which means Halloween is also coming up. I have nothing ordered, nothing planned. Don't know what I'm going to be. It's going to be some last minute bullshit like always, which is never the vibe. It's like, I like to do friend costumes. I think friend costumes are so cute, but it's really hard when you have like a trio. Like I have a friend trio, if you will where we always basically hang out and do plan, you know, do stuff like this together. And one of us has a boyfriend, Layla. Shocker, it's not me. Um, but yeah, one of our friends has a boyfriend. So then it's like, well, you know, they're going to do a couple's costume. So then it's like, do I just do like a friend costume with my other friend? I, I don't know. Like solo costumes are cute, but it's just so much cuter when you do something matching with a friend. Uh, I also don't like not knowing what I'm doing for Halloween or, you know, for for the weekend of Halloween or whatever, because what I would wear for a house party on Halloween would be completely different than what I would wear as a costume to go like out to a bar, right? With like strangers and things like that. The, it's different. And so I, if I don't know if someone's having a party, I don't know basically like how, <laughs> Not like how much skin I can show, but there's definitely some things I'm more comfortable with at someone's house than I am roaming around the streets going bar hopping or with the local, you know, like crackhead outside the dive bar that I like to go to. Like, you know what I mean? I I don't know anything of what's going on and it just pisses me off. <laughs> I really don't like that. Can we all just like have house parties? Can we bring those back? I, I saw something that it's like we're in this awkward stage of our life where none of us are financially stable enough, obviously. One, because the economy just like sucks. The There's like a housing crisis. I mean, I don't really know all the stuff, but 
we're definitely not having houses at the age of 26 like our parents did. So none of us can have house parties. So we're in that weird phase because it's like our apartments typically aren't big enough to throw a party in and that's just not the vibe. So we are basically forced to go to the bars and that's just usually not as fun as a good old fashioned house party like we did at our parents' houses in high school. Or if you went to college, I, I can't even imagine like how fun, you know, and the frat parties and all that. But anyways, I guess I wrote down a few fun fall things that I'm excited to do. Will I actually do any of these things? Um, probably not. Let's see. I, I'd be really proud of myself if I did these things though. I want to go to the pumpkin patch obviously and pick out and buy pumpkins and I think that's like so cute to do with a boy but I'm also like I said with this current like little situationship thing that I'm in I'm like do I ask to do that stuff or is that kind of like whoa we're not date we're not in a relationship but it's like so no or like would you <laughs> I don't know um, but I want to buy the pumpkins and then I want to paint them and drink wine. I'm not a carver. I don't like to carve pumpkins. Obviously I did growing up. I did it, but I hated it. Hated it. Sensory overload. I think I might be a little autistic, but like the, ugh, oh my God, it gives me actually chills down my spine as I think about it. When you have to like grab all the goop out of it. Oh my God. I actually can't even say it without getting chills down my spine. So we're going to skip past that. But yeah, I'm a painter not a carver, you know, whatever. Definitely have to drink wine while doing that. I would also like to go through one of those like corn maze things. Um, I don't really see those often. I don't even know if they have them here in Florida. Like I basically just want to go to like a nice pumpkin patch that has like a corn maze, maybe like a petting zoo. Um, I would like to go to a fair. Do you guys remember like in high school, they would always have those like little carnival things. That was like such a fall vibe. That was always right when like the school year had just started. It was getting kind of cold. You would go and like hang out with the boy that you had a crush on at the fair and like win, win a prize and eat. Co oh my God, the nostalgia. So I want to like do that. Um, make apple cider and different baked goods. Definitely spike the apple cider and like watch Halloween movies. That'd be so cute. But again, so coupley and everyone's gonna be like, Lindsay, just do it with your friends. Okay, you're a lot. Layla. God, she's annoying this episode. Sorry. <laughs> she heard me. Um, it's just better with a boy. Be fucking for real. Um, this I can do on my own though. Paint my nails a deep cherry red. Right now, they're this really, I'm really over this blue color. They were cute for a while, but I definitely want to get back to the red nail theory. Um, and yeah, that's actually all I have written down. Some of the other things I saw were stupid or just didn't apply to Florida. Like, I think one of them was obviously play in the fall leaves. Um, the, there's no leaves on the fucking ground here and they're not beautiful colors. Uh, so that's a little depressing. I don't know why I ended it like that. For this week's cherry, um, so the cherry, the best part of my week was probably like the first half of my birthday celebration, the wine, the cheese, getting dressed up with my friends. Like genuinely, it was like so fun. It was so cute, so good. Probably that or, um, oh, I almost said his name. <laughs> um, hanging out with this guy the day after when I was down so bad he, you know, the, the hangout was like that much better. Dinner was really good going out and like people watching, playing in the park. It was just like really like cute and wholesome and just really nice. So those were positives. Uh, the stem, the part we are throwing out is 100%. If you couldn't guess it, me blacking out on my birthday and crying at the bar and hurting my friends accidentally. Um, that was, it was so, so dramatic and just all the anxiety, all of it, all of that, though, all of those like 24 hours I'm getting rid of, uh, the seed that, so the lesson I'm learning from that, that I will take with me is don't start drinking, um, before eight or 9 PM. I would say if you're planning on going out and being out all night and drinking tequila or vodka or anything like that, don't, don't go to a wine bar first at 6.30. It just was bad, bad, bad idea. Don't do that. So take that with you guys. Um, 
If you enjoyed this episode, I know it's maybe a little all over the place. I'm all over the place, um, but I appreciate you listening. And if you liked it, enjoyed it, please feel free to give a rating, a review over there on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can leave a comment if you're watching here on YouTube. Uh, Feel free to share with your friends. And yeah, Life is Fake merch hopefully coming soon. Make sure to follow Life is Fake on Instagram at Life is Fake Show. I've been posting some stuff there. I really like the vibes and I really like you guys. And I will talk to you guys next week. Love you, besties. Bye.